Hey everyone, it's Valerie with Collective 509. Today I have a special guest. I'm so excited. It's Edouard Duval Carrier. Edouard, thank you so much for participating in our third, fourth series uh, webinar. How are you doing, Edouard? I'm great. I'm delighted to be with you as well. <laughs> so I. I recently got a chance to check out your exhibit at uh, FAU, which is uh, Decolonizing Refinement. And it's, it's a new exhibit for FI, FAU, but I know that it is uh, an exhibit that was uh, presented at FSU, am I correct? That's right, and it was also presented in Martinique, and it started really in Miami at the Museum of Contemporary Arts in North Miami. Uh -huh. So this, this exhibit has, a long peregrination. It's like moving around the planet. Wow. And that's, it's amazing. And there's just so much that I want to dive into. But um, first, before we get started, I want to let our viewers know uh, what this webinar is going to be today. Uh, we're going to get a chance to talk to, obviously, the artist, Edouard duval Collier. Um, who is a huge Haitian artist, Caribbean artist, international artist. Um, we're going to get a look into the current exhibit, as I mentioned, Decolonizing Refinement. And we're going to get a chance to understand a little bit more about the current orientation of his work. And there's a special announcement. So at the end of this webinar, stick to it, because I'll announce the special announcement. And there's so much more. So let's just get started. Edouard. Who are you? I mean, I know a lot of people know who you are. Hi. Who are you? <laughs> well, uh, I'm an artist, that's basically it, but I'm very interested in the region I'm from, which is first and foremost Haiti, but how Haiti is inserted in a much larger archipelago, the Caribbean. And that has, and the history of Haiti, the history of the Caribbean, and the history of the New World is very uh, dear to me because, I mean, I'm still trying to figure it out. That's basically what it's all about. And uh, e, for this group of, e, this series of exhibits that I've done recently, um, it, it stemmed from an invitation I had to the north of Florida. And I was uh, uh, giving a talk there and had a few, I'd visited the city a bit, uh, and it's the city of Tallahassee. And bizarrely, I mean, Tallahassee, even though it's in the south of the United States, had this very French touch to it. And I was really w wondering what was going on there. And a few questions later, I was brought to the, uh, to the Bureau of Antiquities, because that's where it sits. Tallahassee, I think, is the capital of Florida. And they have like this such a thing as a Bureau of Antiquities. And I just, the simple question to the, to the uh, staff there was, is there anything from Haiti? And they said, well, you'll be surprised, yes. And they took me to a room and there were like bits and pieces uh, dating back from the 18th century of uh, a machinery uh, to process sugar that they had found in the region, underground. And the story became a little bit more complicated because, I mean, as we all know, you know, at the, during the, the beginnings of the Haitian Revolution and during the, the heated moments during it, the French colonists uh, fled Haiti and uh, they went to dif different routes. And the ones that we all know about is the ones to Cuba, first of all, and the one to New Orleans. And little did I know uh, that the, the north of Florida was also a destination for these, for these colonists. Hence, the city of Tallahassee has, you know, like, I mean, very Caribbean looking kind of uh, architecture. But m first and foremost, it has a, a, a place where you know, like most blacks live and it's called uh, Frenchtown. And basically it was the slaves coming from Saint-Domingue that settled there. And it's very interesting to, you know, like, I mean, it opened a lot of questioning for me when I was there and, uh, and it did the same thing for the, for the for the scholars that I was uh, working with. So, you know, I came the idea to have this exhibit because I was fascinated by the idea that, uh, um, first of all, the whole discussion on slavery in this country, is, I mean, it's a very convoluted story. Anyways, all I wanted to do was just to make sure that people in this state realize that there's much more links and historical links to a place like Haiti, to my, 
in Florida. I mean, that, that has been erased with time. And uh, uh, it was quite surprising how much information there was about it that I had to really, you know, like uncover and edit and probably, you know, like ask if it, if it was true. And most of the, the hearsay or what, whatever was that I was conjecturing myself happened there. Hence, you know, like a whole discussion on, I mean, the, the, the French that left thought they could do sugar there. They were in discussion with, with, with the central government and they had, they, they, I mean, it's a very convoluted story, which is what I'm dealing out in this particular exhibit. Mm -hmm. It's too, maybe too long to talk to about. And well, also, uh, it, I, I presented in that particular exhibit. Yes, you were going to say something. No, 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 go on, go on. Yes, uh, it, I, 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 I'm very interested in anything about Haiti. And one of the most lovely books written about that, that in my country, Haiti, is, by the way, by a Cuban. His name is Alejo Carpentier, and he wrote a really fabulous book called The Kingdom of This World, El Reino de Este Mundo. And the book uh, it follows the story of Tinoel, Tinoel is, a, I mean, born a slave in a plantation, a French plantation in the north, in Cape Haitian. And uh, the whole, you know, like, you know, like the beginnings of the revolution and post-revolution in Haiti is seen through his eyes. And uh, I've read this novel since I was quite young, probably around 15 or 16. And I've always, you know, like gone back to it because it's such a fascinating story. And uh, in it, one of the other protagonists of the story is Macandal. And um, I've always wanted to illustrate it. And recently I decided to do so. So the product of that particular, uh, and that was also present in the, in, in the, in the exhibit. Okay. So um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, this picture because I was listening to you talk about it during the lecture that you held at FAU about what if? Well, that's very, it's, it's a very interesting story, uh, pictures because it's my new dollar for the island of Hispaniola. Mm -hmm. Our history has been quite fraught with issues. And uh, one thing that, I've, uh, uh, that is lamented everywhere or that is complicated or has complicated things is that the island is now two nations, uh, one uh, to the west, one to the east. And uh, as we know, the Dominican Republic and Haiti. But I, in this particular work, I just want to show, you know, like the reality of the situation where in, on one side, first of all, the, the, the Dominicans call us Congos and they call themselves, you know, like Tigres. So, I mean, this is the Congo and the Tigre. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, the burning man is, you know, like has burned his, his, his uh, I mean, the state of, of the environment in Haiti has degraded very badly. And meanwhile, over there, I mean, they're still producing. I mean, it's not in, they are not in La La Land. They are not in, in a wonderful situation either, but they still manage <clears throat> to produce and, uh, and sell to us a lot of their pro product. So, you know, like our economies are t uh, completely intertwined in so many ways. And um, this is what it's all about, that the economies of both sides are totally intertwined forever. Very interesting. And something that you had mentioned during um, the lecture, and it kind of put a thought, is about that if the islands were divided horizontally, horizontally <laughs> instead of vertically, but you made a point that the water would have been... <laughs> We would all benefit from the, 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 the water more equitably. Do you understand? It uh -huh. is very uh, uh, more equitably. The, the, the way it's been, um, it's been separated has always been part of this problem. And I attended a, a big uh, um, conference on the subject. And they think that there will be problems, very serious problems between Haiti and Dominican Republic because of the question of water. And I heard that and I thought, damn, this is a, the, the, the reality of the situation. They can control the debit of water towards Haiti from their mountains inside uh, a Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. So that's, that can be very problematic. And they anticipate in, in Oslo 
that this might be a hot point, you know, like of, of contention uh, in the near future. Wow. So, another, you know, like that's, another, that's another disaster, you know, like on, on its way for our poor little island, you know. And I actually heard that the lake that separates between, uh, Haiti and the Dominican Republic, I believe it's Lake Asue. I hear that uh -huh. it is also um, either it's, it's increasing. And there are predictions that say that eventually that the, the islands will be reunited together. The lake that's in Dominican Republic and the lake that's in Haiti will eventually merge together into one island based on some environmentalists. I don't know if you've ever heard that. I haven't heard that. I mean, I don't know, they see exactly what you're talking about, but I know that there's all types of issues with mm -hmm. this water situation because you know like the flow of water is uh is i mean it would have been more equitable if you know like there was an, you know like the north or the south of the island you know like if it was separated like that because the the the, the mountains you know like go east west mm -hmm. and you know like you know like the water would go down to the north and also would go down to the south and not you know like uh, the way it's going right now so they get more water than we do I mean, these, these were like things they were saying that, I mean, that I had never really considered myself. And I, I, f I found that very interesting. Uh, but the situation also is that, you know, like we are a small island uh, and uh, the, the, the environment of the island is one and it's been politically separated into two nations. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's, it's complicated. But in the Dominican side, you know, like, uh, when the Haiti invaded the uh, uh, Dominican Republic after its revolution, uh, the idea was that on that particular island, there would be no slavery. And that was the most laudable thing the Haitians did for the Dominicans. But they forgot it very, very conveniently that there is, they, I mean, once the Haiti liberated the slaves in the Dominican uh, side of the island, there was no way for, uh, Spain or whatever, or even the Dominican Republic, to put blacks in, back into slavery. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, remember that. Another um, interesting, before we go on to the next slide, is the background, the blue background in this painting, or not this painting, in this picture. Now, it looks like kind of it's vivid, but my understanding is it's not a vivid. It actually was a motif that was on the ceiling of a plantation. It, can you yes. talk a little bit about that? Well, I mean, I'm very interested in the stylistics of, you know, like the, the, the Caribbean, what they call Caribbean Baroque. And uh, he, I've, I, I, I'm very interested in that. And I've asked them to, to use these kind of motifs, which are not only, you know, like in, in, uh, in Haiti or in Saint-Domingue, but it's like a very colonial looking kind of mm -hmm. uh, uh, environment. So I just played with that. And it's, it's, it's uh, the, I mean, all of these, uh, uh, I mean, the planters, you know, generally, which had slaves were usually very rich. So they used, you know, like, I mean, the, the monies, you know, like not to better their, their, the condition of their slaves, but the, the conditions of their lives. So, you know, like, I mean, they certainly did, very fanciful things for the for the homes and other things. Interesting. So this was one of, from my understanding, the 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 artwork, the art piece that kind of started it all. Can you talk a little bit about this particular series? Can you talk about this piece, which I find very powerful? Well, after my first, yes, after my first visit to to FSU which is in Tallahassee, the, the city I was talking about, I was very much interested in this sugar thing. And I said to myself, I should do a piece, you know, like concerning that. And uh, the whole piece is about that. Of course, it, it has many facets to it because I mean, I can't, I mean, I've early on realized that talking about history, you cannot just do one image. So it's a mul multiplicity of images here and each one of them speaks of different aspects of colonial or Caribbean, Caribbean history in, relation, in relationship to Haiti. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, there are images of this, there was this fabulous artist in the, in the, the, that went not to Haiti, but to, uh, to the British island. And he, and he was the one to 
his name is Agostino Brunias, and he documented and created an idea of the Caribbean that is still up to date, you know, like the one that, that is generally, uh, I mean, circulated about. And he, he, it was the first time they, they started showing mixed bloods, I mean, mulattoes and mul mulatres and stuff like that in the work. So it was very interesting to me. And uh, I mean, I had to go and, and revisit the works of uh, one of the most uh, important historians of the time, which was Moreau de Saint-Méry. And of course, in that one, you, you, give, you get the lowdown. Apparently, the colonial society in Saint-Domingue was, I mean, they, they had a gradation of, from white to black, and wow. there, are, there were probably 133 different, uh, uh, different what do you call it, um, Category. types. You know? Mm -hmm. Categories, you know, like I mean, the Carteron. I mean, they 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 had so many. I mean, imagine 110. Wow. I mean, who would who could you know like uh, uh, I mean decipher who was what in these categories, you know? And uh, I just showed it, you know, like in this legend. Uh, I mean, I just give six of them, you know, like there's one called Marasa Bumba. I mean, I don't know how what kind of color that would be. Uh, <laughs> There is a Candio Sacatra. I mean, I've never heard, I mean, of course, we've heard of Marabou, Grimel, and Mulatres, but oh, the yeah. last three of them, I don't know who looks like a Candio Sacatra. Yes, yeah, show, show me what one looks like. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I that's fascinating. I'm Asa Bumba myself. <laughs> My Asa Bumba. <laughs> <laughs> That is quite, that's just fascinating that's to even incredible. think yeah. that there was, you said 180 or 150 different classifications. Yeah, when you look at it, I said, who sat down, you know, and, you know, like graded, you know, like the different types of colors and stuff like that. When, of course, you know, like it's products of love, but most probably rape. You understand? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's crazy when you, when you, when you think about it. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. I mean, that's why I want to remind people that, you know, like, you know, not only we are connected with the rest of the Caribbean, but we have a similar history. And that's history, even though we have, you know, like we, we were freed very early on, that story weighs heavily on us. I mean, it's very funny in the Haitian history books, starts with the Haitian revolution. Whatever happened before mm -hmm. is just, you know, like, I mean, like happenstance, you know, mm -hmm. it's something that because it was so bad and, and this and that. But I feel that this 150 years prior to, the, to our revolution is, you know, like very formative in the, uh, in the history of Haiti. And people should be looking at it a little bit more closely. Absolutely. There is an entire story in our narrative prior to the, the revolution. Uh, and, and, and yes, the, about the, the island. About the what island. It I mean, that's where the term, you know, la perle des Antilles, you know, like came from, from that period. And uh, it, I mean, when you think about it, it was never a real pearl. It was a pearl for the ones that made a lot of money, you know, mm -hmm. like exploiting slaves. But otherwise, you know, yes, it was a beautiful, I mean, when you take descriptions, even Columbus, when he landed on the island, and he said that, that's why he called it Hispaniola, because it reminded him of the forests of Spain, mm -hmm. which of course were by the time he died, had disappeared. Mm -hmm. And he also have disappeared. So, I mean, you know, like to show you that he was, uh, uh, he was contemplating, you know, like, I mean, uh, already a defunct story. And these kind of things, you know, I put things in perspective for me and trying to understand my place in this world, my place in Haiti, my, my history. And I realized that, you know, like Haiti is just as a complex place as anywhere else and has you know a great uh i mean the only word i can find for for haiti is that it's an iconic place it's very particular very peculiar and very interesting but we should not stay there we should not just you know like i mean we have to really understand that history and maybe one day put it behind mm -hmm. you understand mm -hmm. looking at the future for our coming up generations you know mm -hmm. But I find, I find our history quite fascinating. And that's what I want to put in work. And These I, big, large paintings that you have, we have here mm -hmm. at this moment, yeah, it's from, you know, like, I mean, just a, a folk story. 
called, you know, I mean, these characters are called Sukuyans. I had not, you know, they are, they existed. I mean, the term, I've, I've heard it here and there in Haiti, but where it's really, you know, like popular is in the, the French Antilles. And by the way, the French Antilles are just like us, you know, I mean, like, it's an extension. People, Haitians should be much more aware of, you know, like their brothers and sisters in Martinique and Guadeloupe and other smaller islands. Because, you know, like, they're the, they are really our brothers and sisters in, in and they have this story about the Sukuyans. Apparently, the, these characters, you know, like are, you know, like they can take their skin off, and and it's very fantastic. So I tried to figure them out, and this this is what I came up to illustrate them. Is it their version of Lugau? <laughs> Literally, apparently, they fly around and they go in and they eat babies and they do things and they are very nasty and stuff like that. But, you know, I mean, and they, they, they bring death. I mean, they, they are very, uh, it's like a, a yeah, Lugau, what we would call a Lugau. Interesting. But then we call them Sukuyans. Sukuyans. <laughs> now, what about this piece? Which one, the sculpture or the, or the, or the painting? As the you sculptures, wish. I mean, I've decided, you know, like, as you wish, let's talk about the sculptures. I, I find the Voodoo Pantheon quite a spectacular and fascinating thing because when you really think about it, you know, like, the, the people from Africa that came to Haiti didn't come from one place. They came from all over Africa. Mm -hmm. And each group that came had their, uh, their lores, their, their gods, their spirits and whatever so early on in my life i decided to put a face to all of these gods and that has been a very interesting proposal from my point just trying to figure out first of all where they came from uh in africa uh and what did they look like or what did, what were the purposes so you know like i realized that you know haiti is like has there of course you know like the i mean haitians themselves say it especially, you know, like, I mean, real country, country folks, that there are 200 nations. And when you ask them what they mean by that, I mean, it is the fact that they are very different people from very different regions in, in Africa, you know? So they constitute, you know, like, I mean, nations. And that's what tribes are, you know? They were nations. And uh, I've always been fascinated with them. And so if I calculate, there's probably... If there are 200 nations, that each of these nations have like 10 gods, because that's, that's the, 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 I mean, the minimum, you know, like in, if you have gods, you have God for love, God for rain, you have God for uh -huh. that. You must have 10 of them. So you multiply 10 by two, that, that means what? We have how many gods in Haiti? A lot so, of I mean, gods. It's like a, a lot of gods. So, you know, like I have, you know, like, I mean, I just, I've just, at this point, probably made 20 or 30 of them. So I have like thousands to make more. You got a long way to go. <laughs> a long way to go of illustrating gloires and mysteries. And then, and, and then you have, you know, Petwo and you have Rada and you and have the gods that are from... The ones that, have like, that had like little babies in Haiti. <laughs> Exactly. So it's an entire system. You got the local yeah. gods that came from the island, then the ones that got transported to. You know, because every time I speak to somebody else, oh, you don't know this one? <laughs> and it's like a whole different story coming up. It's yeah. fascinating. <laughs> Anyways, I mean, in this show, you know, like, I mean, there is also, I'm a contemporary artist. That's what, really what I want to talk about because you are covering me as an artist and not as a historian. So uh, it's important, you know, like for me to say that I'm always looking for either new mediums, new formats, new supports for my work. Mm -hmm. And I'm always very interested in technology and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And for example, in this work that you just uh, took off the, 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 the seat, I mean, I'm very, I mean, they've said that Haitians carry so many diseases and stuff like that. So, you know, like I've, I've really gone, you know, like to great lengths to understand you know, like the concept of microbes and everything. So these are, you know, like mutants, you know, like full of microbes. Mm -hmm. And you know, the idea is to make sure that people understand that 
we live with these things. Mm -hmm. We are, you know, it's a question of balancing them so that we don't, and in, ultimately, you know, like when we die, we are eaten away by them. Mm -hmm. But as we, as, we, as we live, we have to, you know, like find a balance between them and us, you know, like who's gonna survive, you know, like the longest. So that's why, you know, like that's what all medicine is all about. Mm -hmm. So I'm just playing with that, that mm -hmm. idea. And this piece, which I found, it's so magical. Well, this is, you know, like, I mean, uh, in, in, in the, in the uh, in world of, of, in the voodoo world, the, our spirits, our gods don't dwell in the sky, like in Christian, you know, like cosmogonies and stuff like that. They live mostly under, uh, in, in an underworld and very close to water. Mm -hmm. And this is what I was showing there. And there are caves in Haiti, and I've always been fascinated by them at what happens in those and stuff like that. And here I have, you know, like a, the court of Erzuli, the great beauty goddess, a, she's taking a bath and all of them are entertaining her, all the other gods. And Erzuli was noted as one of the laws that they had invoked for the revolution at Bois Caima. They must have invoked all of them because they needed all of them to, you know, like to defeat the, one of the, Napoleon's army, mm -hmm. you know, so, mm -hmm. and this, mm -hmm. <laughs> and this one, this one is, uh, is a funny one, it's, uh, I, I received a, recently a book, and they just found, I mean, they found about five or ten years ago, the, 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 what it's called, the armory of Hans Christoph, and they found it in England, because he had applied, he had sent, you know, like, to the, to the king and queen of England, uh, the, his court, you know, like, and what were their emblems, their, their heraldic, and I found them hysterical. Uh, so I've, I've used that. So here is King Henry with his crown, because that's the crown that he, that we know he had. Uh, and all of these pictures here are the, the, what do you call it? The, the heraldic uh, symbol of his court. So you had the Duke of uh, Marmalade, the, oh, wow. uh, People think that they're funny names, but they're names that existed in Haiti. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting. It's very interesting. Le, le Comte de l'Avancé. I mean, places, I mean, like they are all tied up to places in Haiti. And, and the, the, what's fascinating is that these were done in the 19, 18, early 1800s. And they have this factor of what Haitian art, you know, like has evolved to be. So early on, we have, you know, like already at King Henry's Christophs, uh, uh, Haitian, uh, you know, like uh, uh, style being developed there. So, I mean, I've always found, found you know, like that uh, there is such a thing as Haitian art, you know, mm -hmm. historically. And what was fascinating, what I liked about these pieces, they were actually objects, right, inside. Yes. There are all types of things going on. They're like floating in space. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're like, to me, what I, I call them uh, like memoirs, you know, like memories. Mm -hmm. And uh, they just, you know, like, I just show, I wanted to see, show people where I get my ideas, what interests me. And there's so many things that interest me that I had to put them in this kaleidoscope kind of presentation. Yes, yes. That's a, there was a couple other pieces from that series as well. Um, I got a couple questions for you before I let you go because I know you probably have a busy, busy life and you need time to paint, read, do all the amazing yeah. stuff that you do. So a couple questions that I wanted to ask you. How has the modern colonial world been quote unquote coded? Well, what they mean by that is that, you know, the, the, the histories were written by the powerful. And uh, they wrote their histories as they saw fit for them. And they were talking about their slaves. They were talking about the, the indigenous populations that they had uh, destroyed and all of these things. So they had to make, you know, like a discourse that suited them. And what I'm trying to make sure is that two centuries later, artists, in, intellectuals from the, the, the region, know that all of these, co the, 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 these, these dialogues, these, these uh, uh, explanations that were given prior to our liberty and stuff like that, 
were already, you know, like, I mean, in our disfavor and that we had, and they were coded. So we have to uncode them and present the reality as it was. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, as an artist, I think that's my duty to do so. And coming from the Caribbean, I mean, our history is, is, is very fraught with, you know, like misconception and prejudices and stuff like that. So I'm trying to dispel all of those. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so the kingdom of this world you talked about uh, previously uh, influenced you in this exhibit. I'm just curious, what are some other literary works that you recommend um, to who are interested in learning more about the Caribbean, but through the eyes of like magical realism? Well, there's so many of them. I mean, to the point that the, that the literature from not only the Caribbean, but from the rest of Latin America has been dubbed a magical realism to, to, to a great annoyance of many, many authors which do not work like that. But personally, you know, like I felt, I, I feel that it, the reality in, in Haiti is so tragic that, you know, like only humor can at attenuate it, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, if that's what, ma I mean, seeing the world, you know, like through magic uh, um, is one way of, you know, like, I mean, supporting or surviving, you know, like this, this, this horror that, that most of my uh, fellow Haitians, you know, like live in. Anyways, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, we have a long way to go to decode as we were just talking about our history to, to understand it properly and probably find ways to move on where, you know, like, I mean, the benefit that will benefit, you know, like a majority of Haitians, not just a few. Mm -hmm. And one final question. What do you want as an artist? What do you want the viewer to take away from your art in general? Well, I have a strategy, by the way. <laughs> And the strategy is very simple. I create, you know, like very, uh, I mean, pleasing looking objects and visions and stuff like that. But when you get very close to them, you realize immediately that there's more there than, than meets the eye. And uh, you can, be, you know, like it's almost like a, an act of seduction but when you get close to it, you realize that you're confronting a history full of horrors and uh, make people, you know, like think about the role of art. Yeah, definitely. And and I, all the... From yesterday's exhibit, as we were talking before, you really made me think <laughs> yesterday. And um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you I, a lot. As long as I did that, I'm delighted. <laughs> <laughs> all right. right. Well, Edouard, I want to say thank, thank you. Thank you very much for this interview. Before we let you go, I just want to let everyone know that we're doing a we're gonna we're gonna collect the five hundred nine is gonna do a little giveaway. We have a copy of the catalog from the art exhibit that's currently being uh, exposed at FAU, but this was I think the catalog from FSU. Um, we're gonna give this away, and Edward's gonna sign it. So you have your chance to get this free copy of this amazing book. I started reading it, and I just it really opened up my mind, my spirit. Um, giving me a new perspective on seeing the Caribbean and the relation in the northern part of Florida, all that connection. So if you want to enter into this, go ahead and visit our website, collective509.com slash subscribe, and you'll automatically add it to our list. And then next week, I'll say next Friday, I'll give you guys a week. I'll randomly pick a... Um, pick someone's name out and they'll get a chance to have the book. So voila. So thank you guys so much. And while this has been um, a pleasure, uh, amazing. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm delighted to be part of it. All right. All right. Take care. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Be sure to click on the red subscribe button below to receive notifications on all our new videos. Peace and art. Till next time.